Our setup is complete and now we are ready to look at the results. So we go back to the simulation process and open the results and we'll add a displacement magnitude. Since the problem description asked for the first six modes of vibration, we will need six contours of displacement magnitude where we vary the mode from first to last. So we'll keep this for the first mode and we'll rename it mode one. And then we can create another one, naming it mode two, choose the same variable, displacement magnitude, and we'll change the mode from first to second. And we can repeat this process for each of the remaining modes. And if we go back to results, we can evaluate them all at once. So now we can look at the displacement magnitude for each of the modes. For the first mode, we see that we have no displacement at our fixed end, and our maximum displacement is over at the free end. And then we can go back and look at the second mode, and we still have no displacement at the fixed end, and our maximum displacement at the free end. And this continues for each of the remaining modes. We can further look at the frequency for each mode, and we can find that if we go back to the simulation process and under physics, and under output and eigenvalues, the frequency has been calculated in hertz for each mode. And this is where, if we want to see how valid our analysis was, and we go back and refine the mesh, if these values don't change very much, then we know that we have chosen a suitable mesh, and we don't have to refine the mesh any further. So I'll go back to the simulation process, and under mesh, I will increase the resolution and regenerate it. And now if we look back under output and statistics, we can see that the number of elements has increased to almost 20,000. So now we can go back to simulation process and physics and update the physics. And if we look back under eigenvalues, we can see that the values haven't changed much, which means we did not have to refine our mesh and our analysis was valid. 